How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel. Summer is on the way and what better way to enjoy that summer than in a nice convertible car. I'm really looking forward to summer, assuming that we get one this year, because I can take my MX-5 out, put on a shirt, some shorts, some small shoes and some shades, and then pretend that I'm, I don't know, in Miami Vice or some nonsense. So in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 convertible cars that cost less than 5,000 pounds that you can buy, drive around this summer, enjoy, and basically have a great time. Although in the UK, we only really have quite short summers, but I'm ho I'm, I'm hopeful. Topic of the week this week, somebody want you to comment on down below, what do you prefer, hard top convertibles or soft top convertibles. Let me know in the comments down below and we'll have a chat about it. Remember this is from the UK market perspective so prices in other countries may differ and remember that whenever you buy any secondhand car, maintenance, repairs, insurance, tax, all that kind of stuff, important to remember. Anyway, remember to like, comment and subscribe for more weekly car content but without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Starting us off at number 10, we have the MGTF, which hosts a 1.8 litre inline four engine, putting out 134 brake horsepower and managing 0 to 60 in 8.2 seconds. This is quite a Marmite car. On the one hand, it's a convertible, mid engined, rear wheel drive British Roadster, which is right up my street. While on the other hand, it's a sales failure from Nanjing Automobile, who resumed production of the MGTF after the company went into administration. The MGF, which preceded it, was built to rival the Mazda MX 5 and the Lotus Elan, but the TF was massively re engineered to increase the handling and power which the F lacked. You can pick one of these up for as little as a grand, but £5,000 will get you a very decent model with around 45,000 miles on the clock. The key issue with these MGs is the Rover K-Series engine that sits beneath it. I'm sure those of you in the know are already hissing and moving into attack position, as these engines are synonymous with head gasket failure, so something to look out for. Anyway, a cool concept for a car, but not one I've ever considered. Either way, for summer, it would be a pretty cool car to road trip in. In ninth, we have the third generation Toyota MR2 which hosts a 1.8 litre inline 4 engine with variable valve timing, putting out 138 brake horsepower and taking it from 0 to 60 in 7.7 .7 seconds. Another mid-engined rear wheel drive sports car but this time from Japan. Though I would argue it's a bit less cool than the previous generations of the car, it still sold relatively well and many praised the car for its handling, though others suggested it wasn't quick enough to match that handling. One thing to look out for though is bad weather conditions as forums are alight with pictures of MR2s backwards in hedges when they've been driven in the rain. I even know someone who's crashed their MR2 in the wet to this point. Like the MG, these go for under a grand, but for £5,000 you're looking at a fresh 30,000 miles on the clock, not bad at all. The reliability of the MR2 is highly praised by owners and journalists alike. Toyota have a great reputation for this, and the MR2 follows suit. Instead, check the suspension as people sometimes like to abuse these cars a little too hard. A great contender in the same class as the MG mentioned before, but a lot more reliable, so probably the better option for someone who isn't an enthusiast to buy the car. Next up we have the Pininfarina designed Alfa Romeo Spider Type 916 with the classic twin spark 2 litre inline 4 engine putting out 150 brake horsepower and managing 0 to 60 in 8.2 seconds. I actually prefer the non-convertible version of this car, the GTV, but either way the design by Pininfarina is stunning. Expect to see this in a cheap beautiful cars video in the future. Before we continue on with the list I want to say a massive thank you to all of you who've gone over to my Instagram to give me a follow. I'm super close to 2,000 followers so please go over there, drop me a follow and it would really help me out. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button, press the notification bell because 84% of you haven't hit the notification bell who subscribed to me. That's crazy. Hit that bell. You'll know when the videos go live. It's all good. It's not just three phases worth of a pretty face though. It's actually very capable. It's eligible for the Twin Spark Race Series here in the UK and it was named the best sports car in the world. By Jeremy Clarkson back in 1998, although we know he's massively biased towards Alpha, so take that as you wish. My favourite thing about the design of the Spider is the cover for the soft top roof, which sits flush with the rest of the car so you don't see any ugly mechanical parts of the roof when driving it with a top down. I've seen cheap ones at around £1,000 but lowest at the time of making this video is around £3,000. Five grand will get you one with around 70,000 miles on the clock, so again, not too bad, although it is an Alpha. There are a few known issues, particularly relates to oil pump failures and general oil drinking. It's an Alfa, so it may not have the best reputation ahead of it, but Alfa Romeo do provide both new and refurbished parts for older cars, which may come in handy when sourcing parts. I'm certainly a fan and would go as far as suggesting it would probably look more exotic than any other car on this list on a hot sunny day driving around Lake Como. In seventh, we have a car close to my heart, and one this list could not be without, the Mazda MX-5. Now, of course, you can get the NA and the NB MX-5s for under £5,000, as I 
prove with my £1,000 1997 NA, but in this video I want to focus on the arguably less loved NC, specifically the NC with the 2 litre inline 4 engine, putting out 157 brake horsepower and managing 0 to 60 in 7.6 seconds. One special point about the NC is it was the first MX-5 that was given a retractable hardtop convertible option. The car received two facelifts, one in 2008 and one in 2013, and though there are none of the latter at our price range for this video, in my opinion the 2008 facelift was far better than how the car originally looked, but feel free to disagree. You'll get one of these for as little as £2,000, and £5,000 will get you one with around 60,000 miles on the clock, which isn't too bad. Reliability is not bad at all either, though worth checking your timing chain tensioners which can fail, and the key issue always with these MX-5s is rust. Always good to expect to see rust, and be pleasantly surprised if there isn't any. This is a highly praised car by key figures in the car world, due to its performance and smile factor for the minimal price. Again, back to Mr. Clarkson, he said the only reason he gave the car 5 stars was because he couldn't give it 14. In 6 we have the E93 BMW 325i M Sport which has a 3 litre inline 6 putting out 215 brake horsepower and managing 0 to 60 in 7.4 seconds. A point to note however, if you prefer the previous generation E46 and you could also get a 330ci which also has a 3 litre inline 6 putting out 231 brake horsepower and hitting 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds, so slightly quicker. But in terms of the E93 I've always been a major fan of how it looked when compared with the rest of the E90 series, with that hardtop convertible roof and the nice upgrade on the interior compared with the E46. Despite being a convertible, it also has much better rigidity than the E46 convertible as this was a key feature BMW focused on. There were facelifts in 2008 and 2010, with the 2008 facelift being the most significant. If you want to see more on these cars, I'd highly recommend checking out Vehicle Virals on YouTube, he's got an unreal E93. You can get one of these for around £3,500, but for five grand, you are looking at around 90,000 miles on the clock regardless. It's worth checking whether the injectors have been done on these at higher mileages, as it can be quite an expensive service, and the run flats are a renowned issue that cause alloy cracks. All in all, one of my personal favourite cars on this list, although I would wish I was rolling around in the E93 M3 instead. Kicking off the top 5, we have the second generation Saab 93 Aero, with the 2.8 litre turbocharged V6 engine putting out 251 brake horsepower and getting to 60 in 7 seconds. These are very capable cars with some mad tech for their time, including a passive rear wheel steering design and passive toe-in to reduce understeer. I've been driven in one and I must say the power, particularly at the bottom end, is beyond surprising. It really pulls hard. The convertible came on sale in 2004 and was continued through to the facelift in 2008. The easy way to spot this difference from my perspective is the headlights, but there are actually quite a few design changes. These go for as little as £3,000 and you'll get one with around 70,000 miles on the clock for your £5,000, so not bad at all. These look generally very reliable according to owners on forums, but points to be aware of include the fuel pump, expansion tank, and a simple one, batteries being quite weak. Maybe not the first car that comes to mind when you think convertible for summer, but definitely don't overlook it. The car was meant to take on cars like the 3 Series, Audi A4, and Jag X-Type, so it clearly puts up a good fight. In fourth, we have a car that I reckon will achieve classic status in the not-too-distant future, the Porsche Boxster 986S, which has a 32 liter flat-six engine, putting out 252 brake horsepower and managing 0-60 in 5.7 seconds. The reason why I think it will become a classic is because it was partially responsible for turning Porsche around from being a failing business with falling sales to something worth having again, not to mention it just keeps looking better and better with age. The idea was that it would appeal to a wider market than the 911, as it would be cheaper without compromising on Porsche's design philosophy. And given the car is praised significantly for its handling, as with many other Porsches, I would say that it probably achieved that, despite the fact that many people don't like the fried egg headlights. You'll get an S for around £4,000 with high mileage, and for £5,000 you're still looking at around 100,000 miles on the clock. There are a whole host of issues that could come with the Boxster though, making it quite difficult to fit into this short section. What I would suggest is bring an expert to the car you're considering and get the maintenance done early as a rebuilt engine can cost up to £10,000, making your cheap summer investment a lot more expensive. But it would be quite rude not to consider one of these anyway. A beautiful car with classic potential, I reckon these are the best long-term buy on this list. In third we have the BMW Z4. The most power you'll get out of a non-M version for your £5,000 is 261 brake horsepower from the 3 litre inline 6 engine and it'll do 0-60 to in 5.5 seconds which makes it the the quickest car on this list. It was built to overcome some of the criticism the Z3 received around not being sporty enough, so not only is it visually more aggressive, it also features a much stiffer chassis and numerous parts made of lightweight materials throughout to make up for the fact it's much larger than the Z3. The key negative, however, is the steering which has been criticised for lacking feedback. Another negative
alternative is that if you go for the Z3 instead, you get a Bond car. And in keeping with the convertible theme of this video, chuck on a nice suit with some shade and the top down, and you can imagine you're in Goldeneye, which you can't in the Z4. In terms of price, you'll get the Z4 for as little as £3,000, and £5,000 will get you in with around 80,000 miles on the clock. When it comes to reliability, the engine is generally considered to be strong, as long as you learn the key points to maintain. Most issues I could find are build quality related, so check for cracks in the rear springs and for any corrosion. All in all, a staple roadster to get involved with. A key similarity I think it shares with the Z3, however, is that they both look better as hardtops. Taking second in this video, we have the R230 Mercedes SL500, with its 5 litre V8 engine putting out 306 brake horsepower and managing 0 to 60 in 6.1 seconds. With a name tag like SL, Mercedes had a lot to live up to with this car, and they marketed it through the famous Lucky Star advert, which I mentioned in a previous video, and as the safety car for F1 at the Hockenheim Grand Prix. Clearly it's a hardtop convertible, which is a bonus, and the 2006 facelift is still within our price range, which is sick, as this car is not dissimilar in style to the McLaren SLR. It basically sits just above the SLK, which could also fit into this list, and a long way below the SLR, but you get the idea. These are sitting at around the £5,000 mark, so that's the minimum you should expect to spend on one of these. From an engine point of view, the reliability point is an interesting one. Owners note they're generally very decent. It's again the build quality with problems with the water leaks in the boot, amongst several electrical issues that cause the problem. Servicing and maintenance costs a lot, as does anything when they go wrong, so they may cause your wallet to tremble just a touch if you hear any off noises. This is another car that I think will have classic status one day. There are a few SLs from before this one well on their way, or already at classic status, so a pretty solid bet. On top in this video, thanks to its 4.2 litre V8 engine, 339 brake horsepower, and 0 to 60 time of 5.7 seconds, is the Audi S4 B7 Cabriolet. It's the only all wheel drive car on this list, and that's a proper Quattro 2 with a 40 60 front rear torque distribution by default, rather than being a front wheel drive car that engages the rear drive when needed. What I think is particularly cool about it as a soft top is the fact that it's the only version with two doors rather than four, which really switches up the look of the car when compared with the saloon and estate models. I've spoken more about this car in previous videos, so feel free to check them out if you want to know more. These go for around £4,000 at the minimum, and £5,000 will get you on with around 100,000 miles on the clock, give or take. Now, reliability. Not horrendous, but if you haven't heard of the dreaded timing chain issue by now, you should look it up, and then reconsider. Simply put, Audi put a timing chain in as the B6 S4 had a timing belt which broke. The timing chain should last forever, so they moved it to the back of the engine. They forgot that the tensioners will still break or loosen. This means that to fix these parts of the car, you have to remove the whole engine from the car. Not fun at all. But if you ignore this slight blip, a pretty amazing car for the money with unreal performance and a drop top roof. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to hit the like button as it really helps the video out. Massive thank you to the patrons as always. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. But thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Listen.